Hey everybody, today we are looking at section 7.2, which is similarity and transformations. So in 7.1, we talked about what similar figures are um, and what their relationship is between their signs. And today we're going to look at it in terms of transformations. We have done congruence transformations, which were all of our um, transformations that maintain congruent figures. So our reflections, our rotations, and our translations. Um, today we're looking at similarity transformations, which is a dilation, okay? A dilation is where you have the same shape, but it's changing the size of the figure, all right? Um, K is usually considered our scale factor, so that's the letter we tend to use. If K is between 0 and 1, that means that our, um, pre, our image from our pre-image is going to get smaller, Okay, it's a reduction. If K is greater than one, then it's gonna be an enlargement. So if we look at this picture here, A is our original pre-image. A prime is smaller. So this is a reduction, which means that the scale factor is gonna be less than one. A way that you can think about it is by thinking about your bank account. Would you rather have your bank account balance be multiplied by one half, which would make it smaller, or by two, which would make it bigger? Okay, so if you forget which way, um, is which with your reduction and enlargement just think of it in terms of a bank account and that will help you remember oh that means this is smaller so it gets bigger or, so it's a reduction um so again a dilation is a similarity transformation and every point gets dilated from a center okay so if i'm taking this segment here pq and i'm dilating it to p prime q prime this is going to be an enlargement Okay, but where it comes from here is point C. This is called my center of dilation. So if I were to put the distance from C to P prime over C to P, I would get a fraction. And if I put C to Q prime over C to Q, I would get the same fraction. So again, it's just like in that similarity that we talked about yesterday. All of those sides are going to be proportional. All those lengths are going to be proportional. If I put PQ prime over PQ, or P prime Q prime over PQ, that would give me, again, the same proportion, okay? Um, so again, we're just looking at lengths, and basically when we're looking at dilating from C, we're kind of looking at the triangles that it creates, and it's gonna create those similar triangles, all right? So every point is going to be that same proportional distance from the center. So let's kind of take a look at what that means a little more over here on the next slide. So we kind of want to just look at, does it look like it's a dilation? So again, we're also looking at the same point to see, does this look like it's similar? So when I look here, these look to be about the same shape. So they look like a, a dilation. When I look here, these are the same height, but a different size and shape. So these are not a dilation because remember, it has to be just like a similar, um, just like similar figures. Similar figures are created by dilations, okay? It has to be the same shape, just different sizes. All right, so any questions on that, go ahead and write it down. And let's take a look at what happens when we are applying our dilation, okay? When we remember from our congruence transformations, we had our transformation rules look like this. When we said either negative x, negative y, or we did y, x, or, you know, we did the different, um, the different uh, da, 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 transformations based on what was happening to X and Y. Dilations are gonna do the same thing. Notice that in these dilations, our multiplier, which is K, this is our scale factor, is the exact same number, okay? Here we've got two thirds and two thirds. That will always be the case, all right? In order to have a dilation, your scale factor has to be the same. So what you multiply X by and what you multiply Y by must be the same. So we want to first off start by graphing our original um, pre-image. So let's kind of take a look at that. We have A is at 2, 1. B is at 2, 3 and C is at five, one. All right, so this is A, B, and C. Okay, now we want to apply the dilation to X, to Y. 
So one way that I kind of like to do this is by looking at a chart. I have 2, 1, B is at 2, 3, and C is at 5, 1. Okay, so then I'm going to take this and do 2x comma 2y. So this was my xy. All right, so I'm going to take each of these coordinates and multiply them by 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. All right, uh, 2 times 2 again is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. 5 times 2 is 10. And 1 times 2 again is 2. So this is going to be A prime. This will be B prime and C prime. So let's go ahead and graph those in there too. All right, so we've got 4, 2. So we're going to go over 4, up 2. And 4, 6. And 10, 2. So this is going to be A prime, B prime, and C prime. So again, four dilations. All we're doing is we're going to take each coordinate and multiply it by the scale factor. And again, we should be have the same thing to multiply by X and by Y in order to have a true dilation. All right, let's come over here and look at part B. So notice that my X here, or not my X, my K here, this here is K, this is our scale factor. Okay, it's greater than one. So my pre, or my image, excuse me, should be larger than my pre-image because it should be an enlargement, which is what we have here. So I'm gonna kind of slide over here. When we look at this one, my K or my scale factor is two thirds. So I should anticipate a reduction, something that's going to end up smaller than my pre-image. All right, so let's take a look by starting off by graphing our pre-image. So we've got negative 6, 3, and negative 3, 9, and 3, 6. All right, so this is P and Q and R. All right, so again, we're gonna take my original X, Y here, and P is at the point negative six, three. Q is at negative three, nine. And R is at three, six. So now we're going to find P prime, Q prime, and R prime by taking each of those coordinates and multiplying it by two thirds. All right, so just a reminder, when I'm doing negative six times two thirds, okay, it's the same thing as ne saying negative six over one times two thirds. If I multiply across the top, I'm going to get negative 12 over 3, which is negative 4. Okay, so I'm not going to do this with every one, but reminder that this is how we multiply by fractions. You could also take this here and simplify right up front, knowing that this is going to be 2 and this is going to be a 1, which would also give us negative 4. Okay, because we know that these are going to reduce. So either way, it doesn't matter. But again, I'm not going to do that for each one. All right, so negative 6 times 2 thirds, we just said was negative 4. Okay, 3 times 2 thirds is going to be 2. Okay, negative 3 times 2 thirds is going to be a negative 2. 9 times 2 thirds is going to be 6. Okay, again, 3 times 2 thirds, we already said was 2. 6 times 2 thirds is going to be a positive 4. So this is going to be the location of all my coordinates, and we're going to go ahead and graph those. So we have negative 4, 2, negative 2, 6, and 2, 4. And this is going to be P prime, Q prime, and R prime. So again, my scale factor, my K was less than one. 
um, but greater than zero. And since it's a fraction, I know that it's going to be smaller. So it is a reduction, which is what we have here. So that's a good way that you can kind of double check. All right. Let's take a look at these two. We want to determine whether or not these polygons are similar. One quick and easy way is compare all the coordinates, okay? If I do negative three over negative two, that's three halves. Negative three over negative two, that's three halves. Negative three over negative two, three halves. Six over four, three halves. Six over four, six over four, six over four, all of those are three halves. Again, negative three over negative two, three halves. So I'm going to multiply each point by the same thing to get the other one. Okay, so if I'm going from A, B, C, D, to um, H, J, K, L, I'm gonna be multiplying by two thirds because it's gonna get smaller. If I go the other way, my scale factor is three halves. Okay, so yes, these are going to be similar. All right, because again, all of those sides are in proportion. Okay, all those coordinates are in proportion. When we look at this one, same thing. If I go over here and I look at these points are gonna be coordinating, so I do two over five, two over five, both of those are two fifths. If I look at Q, I have two over five, that's two fifths, but then I have four over nine, which is not two fifths, okay? Six over 12 is one half. Four over nine is not two fifths, okay? Again, six over 12 is one half, then I have a two fifths. So clearly, I don't have the same number that I'm multiplying all these points by, so these are not similar, okay? The other way we can check this is by doing the same thing that we did yesterday. This has a length of two, this has a length of four, all right? So that's two over four, which is one half. Okay, this has a length of four, this has a length of, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I would need this to be eight in order for it to truly be similar. So sometimes if the point doesn't work out, check the side lengths just to be doubly sure. Um, but our side lengths here aren't gonna be proportional, so they cannot be similar. All right, looking at the last one, we wanna look and see what happens when my scale factor is negative, all right? So when I look here, I'm gonna start by graphing my pre-image. A is at negative one, one. B is at negative two, negative one. And C is at negative one, negative two. All right, so this right here is A, B, and C. Okay, if I multiply each of these by negative two. Okay, so A was at negative one, one. B was at negative two, negative one. C, negative one, negative two. Okay, and I'm gonna do a scale factor of negative two. So I'm gonna do negative two X, negative two Y. So A prime is gonna go to a positive two and a negative two. B prime is gonna go to a positive four and a negative two. And C prime is gonna go to positive two, positive four. So let's go ahead and graph those. So we've got two, negative two for A prime, four, negative two, oh wait, what did I do? Whoopsies, hold on, caught the mistake. This right here is positive. Okay, so we've got two, negative two, four, positive two, and two, Four. So if we look here, this is A prime, B prime, C prime. Remember when we did our reflections that when we have negative X, negative Y, okay, it is a 180 degree rotation. Okay, so I said reflections, I meant rotations. When we did all of those transformations, if I had X, Y, and it went to negative x, negative y, that was my 180 degree rotation, right? That's what just happened here, okay? Then we did an enlargement with it at the same time. So that's kind of where we were with this, all right? Any questions, go ahead and write those down now.